how much water do we need to add to the mix? We need to think about what the water does in concrete. So it reacts with the cement to form hydration products that bind the aggregate particles together. Now when we initially mix cement, aggregate and water together, the spacing of those individual particles is controlled by the amount of water that we've used. Hydration products in the form of crystals and gel grow out from the cement particles and join together the unhydrated cement particles and the aggregate into a solid matrix. Within a few hours the particles are locked into position and can't move closer together or farther apart. The gaps that remain in this matrix are called capillary pores. Generally, the more capillary pores there are in a volume of concrete, the weaker it is. So the more water there was in the mix to start with, the farther apart the solid particles will be in the matrix, the greater the volume of capillary pores, the weaker the concrete. Of course, over time, hydration continues and the hydration products will gradually fill the capillary pores and the concrete will get stronger. But if the capillary pores are larger to start with, it will take longer to get to the same strength. But there is another factor. The wetter the mix, the easier it is to pour on site. We call this workability. And if the concrete is not workable enough, you'll find it very difficult to compact the concrete to remove the air that gets trapped in concrete when the concrete is poured. If we were to leave the air in the concrete, we would reduce the strength of the concrete roughly by 5% for every 1% of air. So to answer your question, how much water should we add to concrete? The answer is just enough to make it workable. The important thing to remember on site is that increasing the water content of concrete to increase its workability will reduce its strength and it may reduce it below that that's required for the concrete to do its job. What is curing and why do we need to do it? When concrete is exposed to air it dries. If that happens within the first few days after pouring the water required for hydration isn't present and the surface of the concrete will be weaker than the bulk. To counter that, we cure concrete, which is about controlling the environment at the surface of the concrete so hydration can continue. And there are two ways of doing this. One is to seal the water in using plastic sheets. The other is to spray or pond the surface of the concrete with water after the concrete has set thereby providing enough water for hydration to continue. Won't ponding water on top of concrete weaken it by increasing spaces between particles? That's a good question. If we pond the concrete surface too early, the water will get into the concrete and will increase the spacing between the cement grains and the aggregate particles and that will increase the volume of capillary pores and reduce the strength. So we pond after the concrete has set. By that stage the particles are locked in position and the water enables further hydration which actually fills the capillary pores and increases the strength. What if the water is contaminated? Does exposing concrete to water always have a positive effect? Not necessarily. The capillary pores that we've spoken about provide a pathway for water to penetrate concrete. And if the water contains aggressive compounds, then they can attack the concrete. One example would be sulfates that we find in the ground. Those can attack the hydration products and break down the concrete. Another example is chloride that we find in seawater, which if it penetrates to the depth of the reinforcing steel, will cause the steel to corrode. So 
how do we try to resist these problems? Well, the answer is to reduce the capillary pores by starting with a low water content in our concrete and by curing the concrete well.